Well, welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 200. Yep, <laughs> made it to 200. Today we're talking about the three essential math experiences, number routines, word problems, and games. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast, where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. In this episode, I'm talking about my three favorite activities, or I like to call them experiences, that students should be having with math. Number routines, word problems, and games. Before we get started though, I wanted to let you know that I have a gift for all of you that have been listening because it is, as I said, my 200th episode. So I'm giving out a Google file that has examples of all three of the experiences that you can use and modify for your students. You can request that file for free over at the show notes page, which is buildmathminds.com slash 200. Or if you're already on my email list, check the email that I sent today about the podcast because it has a direct link to the file. You don't have to request it. It's already there in your email inbox. If you don't see that email, you can email us or go to the show notes, buildmathminds.com slash 200 and request the download. Now, back when I first started the recoveringtraditionalist.com, I was hesitant to do a podcast because I wanted to encourage all of you educators to make math visual for students. And how can I do that through audio? I thought it had to be in a blog or video format, but here we are. 200 episodes in. So thank you for listening or watching over on YouTube because now I do also record myself doing these podcasts and you can watch the video of it. I just checked the stats on the podcast this week and as of Wednesday, April 30th, 2025, there have been 696,295 downloads of this podcast. With 199 episodes so far, that's an average of 3,499 downloads for each episode. How crazy is that? <laughs> I'll, I'll put a little um, screenshot of the, the stats if you care to go see it. But uh, if we also then include the video views of the podcast, podcast, which I've only been video, videoing the episodes consistently since episode 149, there have been 77,618 views of the podcast episodes over on YouTube. So combined, that is 773,913 times that someone has listened to one of the Build Math Minds episodes. Is that big or small? Depends upon your perspective. I think that's big. Each of those listens means that some teacher out there is building their math mind. And that's happened over 700,000 times because of this podcast. And to me, that is just crazy. So big or small, the reason I reference that is actually a favorite number routine of mine. You give kids a number and then you ask, when would this be big? When would this be small? So for me, 773,913 is big when it's how many times my podcast has been listened to. It's small if that was the amount like a major league baseball player was getting paid for a 10-year contract, right? So speaking of routines, let's get into the math idea. And this week is about something that hasn't changed over the 200 episodes. The three types of math experiences that I believe all kids should be getting in their classroom. As I talk about the three experiences, I'm going to be referencing the Institute of Educational Sciences, which is IES, and the What Works Clearinghouse, which is, I'm going to abbreviate as WWC, and their practice guide for assisting students struggling with mathematics. Now, even though these recommendations that they have from those guides are geared towards students who are struggling, they apply to all students. 
I'll link to the 2021 guide, and I'm even going to link to the very first one that came out back in 2009, which is the document that started my obsession with the three experiences to begin with. The practice guide does not say to use number routines, word problems, and games. But after reading the document, I just kept coming back to those three because they really do help do all of the items that they recommended. Now, you can find the links to those again. Everything will be over at the show notes page, which is buildmathminds.com slash 200. All right, number routines. Why are they so cool? Number routines give you the opportunity to provide systemic and explicit instruction, which is supported by the strong research evidence from the IES and WWC. Number routines make math that we think is implicit. They make those concepts really explicit for struggling students through teacher modeling and structured student sharing. The systemic nature comes from carefully selecting which problems that you're going to use that highlight specific strategies or concepts that you know that the students need to work on, which is really crucial for identifying misconceptions and understanding how your students really approach problems, right? Getting them to talk about it and seeing how they're thinking really happens when you're doing number routines. Number routines really do allow you to hear that student thinking process if you allow it. You've got to sit back and take that time to listen and not directly teach during a a number routine. You're listening to how students are thinking about it and you're helping them see how they can model that. They also help students build flexible thinking around numbers because a lot of routines are about how things relate. And they allow students to see multiple approaches to solving the same problem because you're getting kids sharing their thinking. So in the free download to celebrate 200 episodes, you're going to get some samples of the routines that we have made for teachers who are members of the Build Math Minds PD site. You get an example from Big or Small. Actually, you get a couple examples of Big or Small Make It, Quick Images, The Disappearing Act, and Number Strings. But our Build Math Minds members have complete files for each of those routines and more routines. And each of those files have well over 100 slides for each routine that have them pre-made for number sense, addition and subtraction, multiplication, division with whole numbers, fractions, decimals. Okay, so let's move in to word problems. And, oh, I forgot to show you guys this. If you're watching on, on video my shirt. Number routines, word problems, games. That's what makes Build Math Minds. That's what we're all about here. So on to word problems. The IES WWC guide shows strong evidence that building understanding of story problem structures is effective for students struggling with mathematics. Story problems, or some people call them word problems or contextual problems, whatever you call them, they're the same. They really help students understand the conceptual structure of operations rather than just relying on key words. It's about helping your students understand the structure, not teaching students to just pull out numbers and rely on keywords. One of my favorite ways to do that is through something called bet lines. And if you've never heard of that, you can Google it and you'll find some information about it. But essentially what you're doing is revealing one line of the story problem at a time. You're not giving them the entire problem at once. You reveal one line at a time because it engages students who might otherwise be intimidated by the entire story problem. It's drawing them into predicting what's going to happen next. Because after each line, you say, what do you bet is going to happen next? And then you talk about what would that mean? What would that look like? Word problems really do help students see math as connected to real contexts rather than isolated operations. And when used purposefully with the number talk and numbers routines really component, contextual problems allow students to apply the strategies that they just discussed with similar numbers, but in a contextual situation. By using story problems, you are addressing the fundamental understanding of mathematical operations rather than just the mechanical calculations of them. So again, inside the Build Math Minds PD site, we emphasize using bet lines. We also love numberless word problems. We also started something last year called context-less word problems because we say they're context word problems, but we have something called context-less word problems. 
and just using pictures from your daily life to get students engaged in math and context. You can use those pictures as a starting point to create those contextual word problems. So we have trainings on all of those and resources to help teachers do them in their classrooms. And in the download that you're going to get if you request it, you will find some bet lines and some context less word problems, along with some pictures from my life this past week that you can use or just use them as inspiration to help you see math in everyday life. Some of the pictures that I included in the download are my car's trip odometer from last week. Well, it's about eight days. I think I, I have it as I have four kids in baseball and softball right now and living in rural Idaho, we have to travel a lot for games. Our high school, we have two kids in high school right now, but our high school has two schools that are in their league, so they have to go play them, that are four hours one way. <laughs> it's just one way. So I decided to keep track for one week, which I said technically was about eight days. Uh, it ended up being a Friday through the following Saturday. And in those eight days, I traveled more than 1,900 miles. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. And my car also keeps track of how long it's running. And it, my car was running for over 50 hours. It means I was in that vehicle for over 50 hours in eight days. That doesn't even count the hours that I spent at the ball fields watching or being the bookkeeper for the games. So if I don't get back to you, if you've ever tried getting a hold of me emailing uh, during spring or summer, it is because I spend more time in my vehicle than I do working. So anyways, I took a picture of my dash almost every day that week, and there's just so much math that you could ask kids using those pictures. So those pictures are in the download, along with some other pictures that I took I took or I had my kids take while we were on the road. And again, you can use those with your students, pop them up there on the screen and ask some questions, even just asking them, what do you notice and wonder? Or just use them as inspiration. What can you grab pictures of in your life or your students' lives and then use them to put math in context for your students, okay? All right, our third one is games. I love games so much. I grew up playing games, but practice of mathematics is really an essential piece to building their fluency. Practice and repetition help us retain information. However, most practice is stinking boring, okay? Games can help make practice more engaging rather than tedious work. In the 2021 IES and WWC guide, one of the recommendations with strong evidence is to regularly include timed activities as one way to build students' fluency in mathematics. Did you catch that? It did say one way, not the only way. It goes on to say that we should add timed activities once students have been working on a concept over many lessons. Do not use timed activities to introduce and teach mathematics concepts and operations. Also, did you notice that they said timed activities, not timed tests? Games can serve as that timed activity to practice a component after the conceptual understanding is built through number routines and story problems. Even though students are not timed on how long it takes for them to give a response while they're playing a game, they do have limited time to play and they naturally work as fast as they can because other students are waiting on them, unlike when they are just working on a worksheet on their own for like five minutes. Plus, many games have a natural speed element built in because you have to answer faster than your opponent. So games can be a pain because you have to take the time to teach kids how to play the games and usually that takes longer than the time it actually takes to play the game. So quite a few years ago, I made a template of what I called evergreen games. I called them evergreen because they're always relevant, always useful, always there. The template shows the game in one math context, but you can modify, modify those games to use any math concept. So you, I think there, I included like three examples of each of the games. Um, plus, once you teach your students the rules of how to play the game, you don't have to reteach it. 
right? The directions of how you play that game don't change. Just the content, the mathematical content that's within the game changes. So those templates for the Evergreen games and directions for each game are in the download. And again, you can request all of that over at buildmathminds.com slash 200. So these three, oh, let me show it here. These three math experiences, that's what we really need to include. These three math experiences really do help provide a balanced approach to conceptual understanding, procedural fluency, application of mathematical ideas, and engaging practice. And if I'm lucky enough to still be around doing this in another 200 episodes, I'll still be saying the same thing. Routines, word problems, games. That is what helps build math minds. So until next week, my fellow recovering traditionalists, keep letting your students explore math, keep questioning, and most importantly, keep building math minds.